Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Terigno, and this is page, gosh I've lost track, page 9 of the Geometry C Semester 1 Exam Review. And I think I will actually probably cover pages 9 and 10 in this video. I'll go from problem 32 um, all the way down to problem 40. We'll see if we can get all of those in. Okay, problem number 32 is sort of a vague question. There's a lot of room for you to be creative here. It says, use the right triangle at the right, give three different possible pairs of angle measures for A and C. So it really doesn't give you any information about angle measures here, other than the fact that this one down here, angle B, is a 90 degree angle. But I want you to think about what you know about the angles in a triangle. I know that the angles in a triangle always have to add up to 180. Okay, so I know there has to be 180 total. And here, I'm taking out 90 of it. Okay, so let's take off 90. That leaves me with 90. So that means that whatever angle measures these are, A and C, they have to total up to 90 degrees to stick to that 180 degree rule. Okay, so now it's just up to you to think of some different pairs of numbers that would add up to 90. For example, I could say 40 degrees and 50 degrees. Okay, because those add up to 90. I could say 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Okay, I could get real fancy and say 24 degrees. And let's see, 90 minus 24 is 80, 70, 66 degrees. Okay, you just want to make sure that whatever angle measures you choose the two of them add up to that 90 degrees that we know has to be included in these two angles. Okay? All right, that does it for that question, number 32. 33 and 34 are using this diagram here at the right. And again, I'm not sure if you can see the measurements and the labels in, on video, but hopefully you'll have your packet out in front of you so you can see it at home. Question 33 wants us to find the measure of angle 1, which is this angle out here. Okay, and I want you to think about what we learned about those exterior angles. Remember, exterior means it's on the outside, and this angle is on the outside. Hopefully what you come up with, whoops, is an exterior angle is the sum of the two remote interior angles. So I should be able to add these two angles together and get the measure of that third one. So let's see, 64 plus 58 is 110, I believe 122 degrees. Let me double check just to make sure that I don't steer you wrong. Yep, 122 degrees. Okay, so I know this angle out here is 122. Okay, now I have three different ways that I can think of now that I could go back and find this angle too, which is this angle here. It's the other angle from the triangle. Probably the one you're most comfortable with is knowing that, again, these three angles, this one, this one, and that one, have to add up to 180 degrees. So one way I could do it is by doing 180 minus, whoops, I guess I don't want that parenthesis there, 180 minus that 64 minus that 58. And what you should come out with is 58 degrees. Okay? That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is saying to yourself, well now I know that angle 2 and angle 1 make a straight line. Okay, They lie right next to each other. They are a linear pair. So that means these two also have to add up to 180. And so I could find it by doing 180 minus 122 and again, you should end up with 58 degrees. Okay. The third way, and this one is a little bit tricky, but if you could spot it, it would actually make this problem a lot easier. Notice that these two sides are marked as being congruent. That makes this an isosceles triangle. And we learned that in an isosceles triangle, the angles that are across from the congruent sides are congruent to each other. So this angle would have to be congruent to this angle, and this angle is already marked 58 degrees. So that's using the it-bat theorem, 
you wouldn't necessarily have to list that, but I just wanted you to know how I found it. Um, using the isosceles triangle base angle theorem, we know that these two angles have to be congruent to one another. So that would also mean that this is 58 degrees. Okay? You wouldn't necessarily have to do all of this for this problem. I just wanted you to, to show you three different ways so you could sort of latch on to whichever one makes the most sense to you. Okay, but all three of those ways are perfectly valid ways to solve that problem. Okay, let's go on to the next page. Problem number 35. Okay. All right, hopefully you can make out at least some of this triangle here in this in this part of the video. Question 35 is asking me to classify triangle ABD by its angle measures and by its side lengths. Let me get out a highlighter here. Okay. So ABD is this big triangle here. Okay. If I were classifying this by its angle measures, here's what I would look at. I'd look at this angle. And this angle doesn't have any measurement marked, but remember you are allowed to judge these by sight. So I know that this is an acute angle. Okay. <coughs> this one is marked 60 degrees. And since that's less than 90, I also know that that's an acute angle. The angle up at A is the tricky one. I've got this angle labeled as 30 and this angle labeled as 60. So to get that entire angle, you need to add those together. And really you should find that here at angle A is a 90 degree angle, which means that this is really a right triangle. Remember if it has one right angle or one obtuse angle, that makes it either a right or an obtuse triangle. The only way it can be acute is if all three angles are acute. And this total one is 90 degrees. You really have to sort of look outside the box there. Okay, and then based on side lengths. It doesn't give me any measurements for the sides, but it doesn't have any sides that are marked as being congruent either. And I don't have any information about the angles that would make any sides congruent. So I would say there are no congruent sides in this triangle. And a triangle with no congruent triangles, I'm sorry, no congruent sides, is a scalene triangle. Okay, let's see if I can grab a different color. All right, and next question, number 36, is asking about triangle ACB. So that's this one, from A to C to B. Okay, first of all, angle measures. We know that this angle is acute. We already marked that. Up here now, I'm not looking at the entire angle A. I'm just looking at that 30 degree angle this time. So that is also an acute angle because it's less than 90. But when I look down here at angle C, remember I am allowed to judge that by sight and that looks like it's bigger than 90. So I would call this an obtuse angle here, which makes this an obtuse triangle. Again, it can only be acute if all three angles are acute. Okay, and its side lengths. I have two sides that are listed as being congruent here, and then a third side that's not marked at all. So I would say I have two congruent sides, and two congruent sides makes it an isosceles triangle. Okay. Okay, that does it for 36. 37 wants us to look at that other triangle over there on the right. Let's see what other color I can dig up here. Okay, triangle ACD. So that's this one here. Okay. ACD by its angle measures. Well, I have that this is 60 and this is 60. So really both of those are acute. And then I don't know this one, but it certainly looks like an acute angle. However, we need to stop for a second because we would be correct to say that it is an acute triangle. All three angles are acute, but it's not the most specific answer that we could give. Okay? If we know that these two are 60, what do you think this third angle has to be? Well, remember, there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So if I did 180 
minus 60 minus 60. Go ahead and give that a try. 180 minus 60 minus 60, that would give me 60 degrees. Okay, so now this angle down here also has to be 60. What do you notice about these three angles? Do you notice that they're all the same now? All three are 60 degrees. That makes it equilangular. Okay, so be careful that when you're classifying triangles, you're using the most specific word that you possibly can. Equilangular means not only is it acute, but all three angles are equal to one another. And if we know all three angles are equal to one another, we also know that all three sides are equal to one another. That was one of our corollaries that we learned, that if it's equilangular, it also has to be equilateral. Okay, so our diagram wasn't marked that they were congruent, but we are expected to be able to figure that out based on the angle measures that are given. So sometimes you do have to look beyond what's marked in your picture. Okay. All right, let's take a look at problem number 38. Actually, 38 through 40, I'll use this diagram down here at the right. First question wants me to find the value of M. And M is located here within the side lengths. Or I'm sorry, within the angle measures. The one thing I want to caution you about, and this um, comes into play in this diagram for sure, you never want to be mixing your angle measures with your side lengths. They are totally unrelated things. So they, they will always use different letters in the angles than they do in the sides. That's because you don't want to put them together in any way. Okay, Knowing the side length tells us really nothing about knowing the angles. So I have 4M, 4M, and 7M. And I want to somehow come up with an equation that would let me solve for what M is. We've talked about this quite a few times. What do you know these have to add up to? There are the three angles in a triangle. They would all have to add up to 180. So I could set up my equation by saying 4M plus 4M plus 7M equals 180. Okay. From there, I can just combine my like terms. Really, I'm saying, how many m's do I really have here total? And a lot of students answer that I have three, one, two, three. That's not quite right. I have four m's here, I have four m's here, and I have seven m's here. So when I add all of those up, that's 8m plus 7m makes 15m. And again, I just did that by doing four plus four plus seven equals 180. Divide both sides by 15, and m is equal to 12. Okay, That's my answer for number 38. OK, now it wants me to find the value of n. And n is located over here in the side lengths. Remember, the side lengths have nothing to do with the angle measures. The side lengths don't have anything to do with the 180 degree rule. The side lengths are a totally separate thing. But I do have marked in this triangle that this side and this side are congruent. So that means that this measurement and this measurement have to be equal because that's what congruent means. So my equation is going to look something like this. 6n minus 12 equals 4n plus 4. Okay, we have spent a lot of time in class debating the right way to start solving an equation like that. And I want you to know that there are a lot of different right answers. Okay, I usually try to move the value of n or the value of x that's the smallest because that gives me the fewest negative numbers to work with. And then I worry about um, dealing with the other numbers later on. But if you have a different order that you solve these in, that doesn't mean you're wrong. Just make sure you're still getting the same answer I am. So let's subtract 4n from each side. So I end up with 2n minus 12 equals 4. My next step here would be to add 12 to both sides. And I'm sorry, I didn't leave us very much room there, did I? I'm going to take this up here. That's going to cancel out those 12s. And I'll be left with 2n equals 16. Now I'll divide both sides by 2. And I end up with n is equal to 8. OK, 
Okay, that's what this question was asking for, was the value of n. Okay, so I've answered that question. Now I know what n equals. 40 wants me to find the length of side PQ. That's this side right here, from P to Q. Okay, the only thing I know about PQ right now is that it's equal to 6n minus 12. But luckily, I just figured out what n was equal to. So now I can take that 8 and plug it back in. So 6 times 8 minus 12. Well, that's 48 minus 12, which is 36. That would be your answer there. And we've talked about this in class quite a bit too, but be very careful about reading what your question is asking for. Because a lot of the times when you do get questions like this, it will say, find the length of blah, blah, blah. And you will have to find the variable and then plug it back in. Okay, and sometimes it won't ask you that. Sometimes it'll just ask you for the variable. So just make sure you pay attention to the difference between these two questions and answer the correct way. I would hate for you to get a problem wrong because you misread the question, not because you didn't know the math. Okay? All right, do that does it for this group of questions. I think we have one, maybe two pages to go, um, and I'll be back with that video shortly.